Ireland sits tantalisingly ready to embrace a golden age of affluence, self-assurance, tolerance and peace. It will be my most profound privilege to be president of this beautiful, intriguing country. Good evening and welcome. It was one of the great occasions of state and a happy marriage of pomp and informality when Mary McAleese, distinguished Ulster woman, was inaugurated as the eighth president of Ireland. 600 guests filled St. Patrick's Hall. Politicians, church leaders and members of the diplomatic corps were there and there was a specially invited group of 26 people representing the diverse strands of Irish life. In the castle yard, hundreds of school children cheered and applauded under a cloudless sky. President McAleese spoke of an Ireland transformed, standing confidently on the brink of the third millennium. She singled out peace as the greatest salute to the memory of the dead and living, and again reiterated her commitment to building bridges. Six previous presidents used the famous blue Rolls Royce on ceremonial occasions. Today, just before noon, and in keeping with tradition, it brought President-elect Mary McAleese to Dublin Castle for her inauguration. As it swept into the upper castle yard, the school children from all corners of the island gave the next president of Ireland a rousing reception. Some 600 guests were packed into the famous St. Patrick's Hall for the inauguration ceremony itself. They included political, church, business and community leaders. And a sign of the time, sitting side by side in the front row, were the Northern Ireland Secretary, Mo Molam, John Hume, Gerry Adams, Lord Alderdice and Senator George Mitchell. Meanwhile, outside, Mrs. McAleese was greeted by the Taunister Mary Harney and Minister Michael Woods. Then, just after noon, she made her way into St. Patrick's Hall for her inauguration ceremony. Already in place, the Council of State, including two former presidents, Mary Robinson and Dr. Patrick Hillary. May God bless you and safeguard you. May God illuminate his countenance for you and be gracious to you. And after the service of prayers, the Taoiseach, Mr. Ahern, invited the Chief Justice, Liam Hamilton, to administer the declaration of office to the President-elect. I would now ask you to repeat this declaration after me. August Malon Dihil Ayanov. August Malon Dihil Ayanov. Our son Lassa is Pornip Mwintanahem. Er son Lassa is fond of Winchon the Heron. Gia Dom Stura Augustum Cook. Gia Dom Stura Augustum Cook. After the eighth President of Ireland signed the declaration, the presidential standard was raised above Dublin Castle. And in keeping with another tradition, a 21 gun salute was fired in her honour. Before she made her inaugural address, she went to the body of the hall to meet the 26 people drawn from various strands of Irish life who were specially invited to attend the proceedings. They were given pride of place. In her address, she spoke about this historic day, not only in her own life, but in the life of the country. It is a wonderful privilege for me to be chosen as Uchtaran the Heron, to be a voice for Ireland at home and abroad. I'm honoured and very humbled to be successor to seven exemplary presidents. Their differing religious, political, geographical and social origins speak loudly of a presidency which has always been wide open, all embracing. It is my special privilege and delight to be the first president from Ulster. And she said the theme of her presidency will be building bridges. These bridges require no engineering skills but they will demand patience, imagination and courage. For Ireland's pace of change is now bewilderingly fast. We grow more complex by the day. Our dancers, singers, writers, poets, musicians, sportsmen and women, our businessmen, businesswomen, indeed our last president herself, our giants on the world stage. She then went on to talk about the need for reconciliation. I want to point the way to a reconciliation of these many tensions 
and to see Ireland grow ever more comfortable and at ease with the flowering diversity that is now all around us. To quote a Belfast poet, Louis McNeice, a single purpose can be founded on a jumble of opposites. She also referred to the fact that today is Armistice Day. It is fortuitous too that the timing of today's inauguration coincides with the commemoration of those who died so tragically and heroically in two world wars. I think of nationalist and unionist who fought and died together in those wars. The differences which separated them at home fading into insignificance as the bond of their common humanity forged friendships as intense as love can make them. And towards the end of her address, she quoted a poem written by the English poet Christopher Logue, himself a veteran of the Second World War. Come to the edge, we might fall. Come to the edge, it's too high. Come to the edge, and they came, and he pushed, and they flew. No one will be pushing just gently inviting. But I hope that if ever and whenever you decide to walk over that edge, there will be no need to fly. You will find there a firm and steady bridge across which we will walk together both ways. And to the sustained applause from the guests in St. Patrick's Hall today, Mary McAleese has now begun her journey as the 8th President of Ireland. Presidential inaugurations are grand ceremonial occasions, opportunities for a celebration of statehood. Today was the 11th inauguration. From early morning, the staff at Dublin Castle were busy putting the finishing touches to their preparations for today's ceremony. Gardaí carried out an unobtrusive security operation, while the Defence Forces were present to pay tribute to their new Commander-in-Chief. But this wasn't to be a stuffy occasion. In a significant innovation, guests were not required to wear formal dress, a possible indication of the style to be expected over the next seven years. Another break with tradition was the presence in the castle yard of hundreds of school children from primary and secondary schools from all 32 counties. As the arrivals began, the former president, Mrs Robinson, was meeting the Minister for Foreign Affairs in her new role as UN Commissioner for Human Rights. Among the many political figures who attended the inauguration was the Fine Gael candidate in the recent election, who paid a generous tribute to the president-elect. I wish the new president a wonderful term of office, and I wish her every success. And it's wonderful to see all the children here today, too. Are you tinged with any sadness, the feeling it could have been me? No, I'm not. I had a wonderful campaign. I enjoyed every minute of it, and I wouldn't have missed it for the world. At the same time, Professor McAleese and her husband Martin were leaving the hotel in Port Marnock where they'd been staying for the past 10 days. The presidential Rolls Royce was used for the trip through the city to Dublin Castle with an escort of honour drawn from the 2nd Cavalry Squadron from Cattlebrew at Barracks. After the ceremony in St George's Hall, it was time for the inspection of the Guard of Honour drawn from the 50th Infantry Battalion. The new president then broke with tradition once again with a lengthy walkabout greeting her many well-wishers in the castle yard. Then it was back into the Rolls-Royce, now flying the presidential standard for the journey to what is now her official home and a formal welcome. The new president hosted a lunch at the Aris for over 130 people, including stars from the world of music, as well as politicians, past and present. But quite apart from its ceremonial role, the Aris will also, of course, be home to the three McAleese children, who are today given military instructions on how to gain access. And almost a thousand children from all 32 counties were special guests at today's inauguration. For one school in particular, it was an especially proud day. Form fours. Be in school by six in the morning, Sister Lucina said, and they were. It's not every day one of your past pupils is inaugurated as president. I hope we get to meet ourselves. We have a plaque to present to her, so it should be an enjoyable day. 
Mary McAleese spent seven years at St. Dominic's on the Falls Road in Belfast. She was a star of the debating team and met her future husband at a debate in the school hall. Today, 20 students set off for Dublin to watch her become the eighth president of Ireland. At Dublin Castle, they join nearly a thousand school children from all over the country, including a group from Sandy Row in Belfast. Mary McAleese's primary school on the Crumlin Road wasn't forgotten either. For the pupils of St. Dominic's, it will be a day to remember. Just knowing that she actually stood in the same classrooms and the same families as us, and like she's done a lot, she's done a lot, and we could go on to do things like her as well. And for the three teachers, it was a very special day too. Ailish, Nuala and Geraldine were all in the same class as the president-elect in the late 60s. We're having a party in St Dominic's today and uh, we're all delighted, our Doyne's delighted in Mercy Primary, they're having a party too and we're just thrilled to bits. As Mary McAleese arrived at Dublin Castle, St Dominic's made sure they got near the door. I hope it comes out now. The priority now was not to lose your place at the barrier for the presidential walkabout. The big question was, would she stop? And would she remember her classmates of nearly 30 years ago? Are you impressed? Yeah. I'm glad to transfer to our school because it's something you can always tell people that the president went to your school. That's just lovely, so she is. It's very emotional. It's very emotional. And uh, it just really did something to see Mary walking around there and all of the pomp and ceremony. I'm just so proud of her, we really are. Tonight, the President returned to Dublin Castle to attend a reception in her honour hosted by the Taoiseach. Earlier, continuing a tradition begun by President Robinson, a lamp was lit at Arasan Uktharoin. The symbolic relighting of the emigrants' lamp at Arasan Uktharoin, with Ireland's new President carrying on one of the most popular traditions of her predecessor. Later, the family watched a fireworks display in celebration of her inauguration. Then it was back to the scene of the ceremony, Dublin Castle, for a reception in her honour for 1,200 people, hosted by the Taoiseach. Well, it's been a tremendous day. I think it was a great day of, of ceremony and for an inauguration. I think we were lucky as well that we've got such a, a beautiful day weather-wise. I think we're a number of new features to the whole day, which uh, added greatly to the occasion. And I think that's worked very well. And it, it, it's, I think it's the, the nice thing about the day is that there's just been uh, so many people from all over the country that were able to participate in it. The reception was attended by former Tishi, politicians, members of the diplomatic corps, civil servants and former presidents. And in keeping with the spirit of the day, it was not solely confined to adults. But of course, it was President McAleese who was the centre of attention, as the most historic day in her life draws to a close. And our reporter Anne-Marie Smith is still at Dublin Castle. Anne-Marie, there's been a, a very engaging informality to the day. Was that continued at tonight's reception? Yes, there's been almost a party-like atmosphere here, Anne. The guests were told they didn't have to wear formal dress and they enjoyed a finger food buffet. The president left herself about 10 minutes ago and you might see behind me a lot of the guests are also leaving. But I'm told that before she left, she tried to talk to as many of the 1,200 guests as she possibly could, obviously continuing that theme that she started today when she talked to the children here in this courtyard but I'm sure only a tiny fraction of the number of people that she's going to meet and greet over the next seven years as president. Anne-Marie, thank you for that. And there we take a break. Still to come on the 9 o'clock news, the latest in the Louise Woodward appeal decision. And at home, Slane Castle wins the right to stage pop concerts again. Join us in a couple of minutes. Gregory was made, like all in a campaign, in consultation with her backroom team.
Stylist Helen Cody has the good fortune to be able to spend someone else's money when buying clothes. Her job is to ensure that the fabric for the client retains its look despite crushing. The style is elegant but doesn't alienate and of course isn't too expensive. After securing the government nomination, Mary McAleese hit the road meeting the people and carrying out numerous interviews. Her strategy worked and led to victory at the polls. Today at Dublin Castle, she became the eighth president of the Republic. Attention focused not only on what she said, but also what she wore. The president was wearing a wonderful cashmere, slim line, long coat, single button with a fake fur collar. And underneath, um, again, very slim line, velvet, I would call it a foam velvet um, jacket and skirt with a, a, a scalloped neckline. We looked first of all at, Mary, at the president, at her colouring, um, and then we worked from there in terms of line and silhouette and what would work on the day. So what did the critics think of the inauguration clothes? I liked it. I thought it was the right mix of fashion and classic. I thought it was very nice and I think the president is obviously going to be a very good ambassador for Ireland in terms of fashion. Tonight she returned to Dublin Castle from the Auras for a reception and wearing a dress designed by Mary Gregory. The president wore a wonderful um, silk penne, velvet, um, long evening coat, an opera coat, lined and hand painted and underneath that she had a, um, also silk penne bias cut evening gown. Somebody mentioned fireworks last week and we thought that to sort of continue the theme we'd, we'd find a, a suitable fabric that illuminated her wonderful personality. And that's the nine o'clock news on a day of pomp and panoply but of joy and informality too when Belfast woman Mary McAleese became the eighth president of Ireland. <laughs> Tomsha Moira Vitgilla Isa. Da Galunt Augusta Yarva. Da Galunt Augusta Yarva. The theme of my presidency, the eighth presidency, is building bridges. These bridges require no engineering skills but they will demand patience, imagination, and courage. Yeah!